Today we ask the question, what drives molecular diffusion? And as a corollary to this uh, question, we also uh, consider the uh, most convenient and proper description of uh, molecular diffusion. The presentation today is an abridged version of my uh, talk on uphill diffusion that can be viewed on my YouTube channel. We start our journey in the Antarctica. Here's a picture taken in Antarctica showing fortresses of ice containing nearly pure H2O in contact with seawater that contains salt. The question arises why there is no diffusion of salt from seawater into the ice fortresses. In order to resolve the uh, paradox observed in Antarctica, let us uh, resort to the uh, Gibbsian thermodynamics of phase equilibrium. For two phases that are in thermodynamic equilibrium, the chemical potential of any component must be equal in either phase. The chemical potential of any component is written as uh, the chemical potential in, the, in some standard state plus R times T times Ln of the activity, where the activity is the activity coefficient times the mole fraction. The chemical potential is the uh, partial molar Gibbs free energy, where the Gibbs free energy has two contributions, the enthalpic contribution and the entropic contribution. These represent respectively the unmixing and the mixing tendencies when the system is subject to perturbations in composition. S is the entropy and uh, is uh, given by uh, the Boltzmann equation. S is KLNW that is engraved on his tombstone in Vienna. The symbol W stands for Wahrscheinlichkeit. You will note that uh, Josiah Willard Gibbs and Ludwig Boltzmann were contemporaries. The red line shown here is a plot of the Gibbs free energy for the uh, ice crystals plotted as a function of the mole fraction of sodium chloride. The blue line is the uh, Gibbs free energy of uh, seawater plotted against the mole fraction of sodium chloride. The seawater contains significantly higher com concentrations of sodium chloride. The uh, The phase equilibrium between the ice fortresses and sea water is described by the common tangent between the two curves. And this tangent intercepts the x1 equal to zero axis at this point, which represents the chemical potential of water in the ice that is also equal to the chemical potential of uh, H2O in seawater. At the other end, the common tangent intersects the x1 equal to 1 axis at which the chemical potential of NaCl in ice is equal to the chemical potential of NaCl in seawater. 
what we note is that there is a equilibrium between the ice fortresses and sea water but this equilibrium corresponds to significant differences in the salt concentration in the ice fortress and in sea water. This example underscores the fact that the mole fraction differences or mole fraction gradients are not the proper driving forces for molecular diffusion. In view of the arguments presented in the foregoing slides, we must abandon the commonly used fixed law to relate the molar diffusion flux to the gradient of the concentration. In uh, setting up the proper flux driving force relationship, we have uh, two choices. The first one is to adopt the Onsager formulation that is, uh, was coined by Lars Onsager, who won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1968. In his seminal paper in 1945, he wrote, the theory of liquid diffusion is relatively undeveloped. It is a striking symptom of the common ignorance in this field that not one of the phenomenological schemes that are fit to describe the general case of diffusion is widely known. In the Onsage formulation, the flux is related to the gradient of the chemical potential by defining a matrix of uh, Onsage coefficients L. For an N component mixture, we have uh, n minus 1 independent fluxes and n minus 1 independent uh, chemical potential gradients that are considered to be the uh, proper driving force for diffusion. The uh, matrix L, that is n minus 1 times n minus 1 dimensional, is uh, asserted to be symmetric and this symmetric relation is dubbed the Onsager reciprocal relations. My own preference in setting up the uh, flux driving force relationship is to adopt a, an approach that is different from the uh, Onsager formulation, but uh, follows the uh, line of thinking that was uh, championed by both James Clark Maxwell and Joseph Stefan in their papers published respectively in 1866 and 1871. Both these pioneers focus on diffusion in multi-component gaseous mixtures. The approach can be generalized to address diffusion in non-ideal fluid mixtures by um, replacing the uh, partial pressure gradients by the gradients of the chemical potential. Let's uh, consider, for example, a binary mixture of species one and two. In uh, setting up the Maxwell-Stefan formulation, we assert 
that the force acting on species 1, which is the negative of the gradient of the chemical potential of uh, species 1, is balanced by the friction that species 1 experiences in undergoing a relative motion with respect to species 2. The frictional term is proportional to the differences in the diffusion velocities u1 minus u2. It should also be uh, proportional to the relative amounts of 2 and 1. And we may take the mole fraction of 2 as a measure of the uh, composition of the mixture. In uh, setting up the uh, linear relation between uh, the chemical potential gradient and the velocity difference, we introduce a factor RT and the uh, maxwell stefan diffusivity in the denominator. So uh, the physical significance of the maxwell stefan diffusivity is that it represents an inverse drag coefficient. With this choice of a multiplying factor, RT, the units of D12, which represents the inverse drag coefficient between 1 and 2, has the units of square meters per second. Only one of the uh, chemical potential gradients is independent because of the Gibbs dm constraint and the fact that the uh, mole fractions add to unity. So this is the kernel of the maxwell stefan diffusion formulation. The persuasive advantage of this formulation is that it can be extended quite elegantly to much more general types of situations as we discuss in the subsequent slide. The uh, maxwell stefan diffusion formulation lends itself to generalization to uh, a variety of uh, scenarios that are encountered in uh, practice in two different ways. Firstly, if there are additional driving forces that act on uh, species 1, for example, pressure gradients or electrostatic gradients, these are to be added to the left-hand side. So the uh, generalized driving force that causes diffusion of species 1 is the uh, isothermal, isobaric gradient of the chemical potential plus a term that is proportional to the pressure gradient plus another term that is uh, proportional to the electrostatic potential gradient. F is a Faraday constant, Z is a charge number. So if I take this term and this term, um, I can describe diffusion in electrolyte solutions. If I take the chemical potential gradient and add the uh, pressure gradient, I can describe uh, the diffusion process in uh, ultra centrifuges that is used uh, for separation of uranium isotopes. So uh, the generalized maxwell stefan formulation asserts that the uh, driving force forces acting on a species are balanced by friction. The driving force for component 1 is balanced by the friction component 1 experiences with respect to the partner species in the mixture, component 2. This is the uh, contribution of the uh, 
frictional contribution between uh, 1 and 3. This is between 1 and n. Furthermore, I can uh, choose n to be the pore wall of uh, a porous material. And if I do this, I recover the uh, equations that describe diffusion in porous media. And as a special case, these maxwell stefan formulation reduces to the uh, dusty gas model for gaseous mixtures. This is the uh, driving force friction relation for component one. I can similarly write the uh, appropriate relation for component two, etc. We note that due to the Gibbs UM constraint, only n minus one of the uh, driving forces are independent. If the species are charged, I also have the electroneutrality constraint. Indeed, um, the Maxwell Stefan formulation yields the well known Nernst Planck relationship as a special case. Here are the major takeaways from this presentation. The gradients of the chemical potential are the proper driving forces for diffusion. The Maxwell Stefan diffusion formulation is the most convenient one. The uh, Maxwell Stefan diffusivities are independent of the uh, reference velocity frame. The uh, Maxwell Stefan diffusivity has the uh, significance of an inverse drag coefficient. And an important uh, fact is that the inverse drag coefficient d12 um, is independent of the uh, reference velocity frame. The Maxwell Stefan formulation can be intuitively extended to include additional driving forces, for example, pressure gradients, electrostatic potential gradients, and also additional species in the mixture. In, um, the pore walls of a, a, a porous medium, such as zeolites or metal organic frameworks, can be considered to be a pseudo species in the mixture. Indeed, the maxwell stefan formulation is the most convenient one to describe diffusion inside zeolites and morphs.